Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. It's the magical moment these brides have been dreaming of. You have to practice your royal life. For now, their dream days in the hands of their dream man. All right, guys, this is it. All done up nice flowers. Will their one big day become one big nightmare? I'm afraid to look. You will. You get to love it. This is like if I'm pregnant and I want to hide my baby bump. <laughs> she ain't going to like this one bit. She'll go absolutely mental. I like the colour and I like the writing as well. One thing's for sure, they're in for a rough ride. Oh no, I literally can't drive, like I can't. Not a hope. He's had some crazy ideas. Oh my God. I'll plan his funeral if he fails. Tonight, Tipperary lad Paddy is determined to do things his way. My team is a bog with. <laughs> but his bride, Brida, has a very different dream. Wow. Absolutely unbelievable. Can Paddy convince her up the aisle with an Irish country crooner? Yeah, I will marry you. And a bog limousine? It's a roller coaster, but will this bride come along for the ride? Where the fuck are we going? Paddy and Brida live in Cashel, but they were a long way from Tipperary when they met working down under, and their first impressions were very different. The first minute I saw her, she was amazing. Straight up. I thought he was sturdy and handsome and there in the background. We hit it off that night, and that was two days before he flew home back to Ireland. He wanted to meet up before he left, but I wasn't interested. He was going back to Ireland, I was staying in Australia. So I didn't see how it was going to work. So I just didn't want to meet up again. So that was it, on your way. <laughs> the real Paddy charm was then. Paddy wasn't about to give up that easy. The whole way home, I just couldn't get her out of my head. I kept texting her, even though it was costing me a bomb at this height, but I still done it. Talking for about three and a half hours on the phone, and then getting up for work, and pining. The most hardest thing I've ever done. We got to know each other over the phone and he moved back out and we moved in together and we got engaged at five months. Within a year, they moved back to Ireland to set up home in Cashel. Baby Emily followed soon after and while three is not a crowd, there is only one boss. Breda, I suppose, is the one who gives the orders. Paddy's the listener, Breda's the talker. And Breda can get very head up very easily. She's intense about things. Breda definitely in the relationship wears the pants because he doesn't get away with much. But usually when there's an argument, he'll try and make light of the situation and get hold of it as best he can. She usually wins because I'd always back down to keep the peace. It's the right only way to do it. Let's hope that letting her gentle giant organise the best day of her life doesn't turn out to be one of her worst ideas. He'll be absolutely useless at organising this. Absolutely useless. He's organised two parties for me before and they weren't a huge success, so everything was, it'll be grand, it'll be grand, but it wasn't, so I think he's going to find it really stressful to pull it off on the day. Because he's going to be torn because he wants to do things his way, but yeah, he doesn't want to upset me, but that's probably going to be inevitable though, isn't it? <laughs> the chances of Paddy getting it right, I'd say, are fairly slim. Alarm bells are ringing already, but there's no turning back now. It's time for Breda and Emily to say goodbye for three weeks, leaving Paddy to go it alone. It's going to be hard leaving. I know it's only three weeks, but it will, it will be a lot. We've never not been able to contact each other, so it's going to be really hard. Definitely have to stay busy. I'll have to go, go on long walks, talk to the boys, but it's going to be very hard, me especially been away from Breda and Emily. I've written a letter for Paddy. I just said to him that he could never let me down. So 
that no matter what he does, or even if things go wrong, that he could never let me down. I didn't expect it to be this hard. I was a little bit stronger than what I usually am, but not when it comes to this. It's only have to come in real now, more than anything. I know what I'm doing it for. It's for the right reasons, to get married and be in a family, but this is going to be the toughest three weeks that I'll ever put down. This gentle giant is a big love struck softy. And that's before he even reads Breda's letter. Paddy, my love, every minute we are apart, I am going to miss you. You are my life. My soulmate. I will be thinking of you always. All my love, your sweetheart. Emily will miss you lords. with Granny. Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. Welcome home. You're, you're mine for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and Emily. I know. Thank okay. you. I look after you. Down to business. And Paddy calls in his wedding planner, 18, David and Ronan. Do you get ready for it? I don't know if I'm ready for it, but listen, I have to do it now. Oh, well, yeah. How, how confident was Breda going off leaving it in your care for the hands? Same way you'd be confident in me leaving me with your sheep above the hill. Jeez, that's not too confident. <laughs> that's not confident at all. <laughs> with their first meeting in a barn, the lads need to come up with a plan. First and foremost, we need to sort out my team. My team is a bog wedding. Did he say bog? <laughs> right. Coming from Breda's side, Breda's from Offaly. They cut turf themselves every year in the bog as well, so. It's the last thing that she'll ever think of. Can't argue with that. <laughs> Getting married in a bog, which I think is brilliant. Just to see it, to see her face, she'll be absolutely totally shocked. So because the bride is from Offaly, she obviously wants to be married in a bog? He has great intentions, but... <laughs> you better set Paddy's an arm cock and tell him wake up. <laughs> what about a bog buffet? How much for the food? I was thinking in around about 900. Yeah, so you've 100 people, Pat. At, so least, at least 100 mm. so that we know of. That's only nine. You're expecting to feed everyone for the day for nine euro a piece. I don't know, is he being realistic some about say, it? Some things he's very unrealistic. Yeah. He wouldn't get a lunch down in fucking Centre for that. Yeah, that's you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Paddy's invitation, please bring a packed lunch with you. <laughs> a perfect wedding day would be an old country house. Has lovely surrounds, nicely done up with candles and flowers. I, I think outside would probably be, yeah, a bit tricky. Inside, we were nice and warm and comfortable. It would be lovely. So I'm just organising, it's not exactly going to be perfect. I have to do it this way, lads, because <clears throat> I've, got to, no, I, I've got the reins. If he wants to make Breda happy, he may want to rein it in a little. Because she dreams of a 300-year-old country house at the foot of the beautiful Schlieve Bloom Mountains. Unbelievable. Oh, it's perfect, yeah. Today, Breda and her family are visiting Gloucester House to see the kind of luxury they're hoping Paddy will provide. Make a really good entrance here, Bea. Ah. Yeah, perfect. Look. Hello. How are you? 
Good, thanks. Hi. How are you, Tom? Lost the house. Thank you. Come on, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you'd like a glass of champagne to help you with the cluster experience. Yes, yeah, right. great. It's so peaceful and it's really private. I love that. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Lots of space to roam around at your own leisure. It's exactly what I would love. It's be lovely for the guests to sit. Because I don't think uh, that would never happen. I don't think Paddy would ever pick anywhere like this. He would probably think it's too fancy. He wouldn't be interested in something as pretty as this. Paddy's idea of the perfect wedding venue is in Loch Bora. Hi, right, lads. This is the place. Follow me. It's spacious, with stunning views and plenty of running water. Not your bog-standard wedding venue. This is the place. Dampen, yeah. What would you expect, like? Yeah, exactly, from the bog. I know it's a bit soft. You're getting careful. Oh, we sure. Listen. Me and Brida up here. People sitting down right here. And we can put kind of some sort of throwovers or something on the, the timbers. What do you think, Dave? He's going to leave yeah, the logs as they are. Or... Well, you'd have to space them out. Well, yeah. A little bit more. And possibly need more seating. Well, yeah. For sure, we can lift over the logs, lads. I think we have the right spot, though, lads. You sure? Yeah. The minute I saw it, I kind of... I knew it was the place to get married. It just felt right in the right location, weather permitting. It'll be perfect. At the end of the day, they're coming to celebrate me and Breda getting married together. I know it's not the Ritz, but it's the best I can do. But Gloucester House really has a lot to offer Breda, including a roof. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That's unbelievable. That's amazing. Gorgeous. Wow. Oh, it's really intimate, isn't it? It's really intimate, yeah. <laughs> There's no idea what elegance and high living and all of this glamour. I mean, this place, I don't think it's any idea. Yeah, it's great. It's absolutely unreal. Yeah. Look at the chandelier. Yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I probably couldn't, couldn't have imagined something any more beautiful than this is. It's perfect. Bringing Brida into a sweet shop, showing her the most wonderful, giving her a taste of all the sweets, and then saying, no, you can't have them. You're going to have to just take what you get, which could be a plain biscuit or something like that. The worst thing Paddy could do might be to have it somewhere where if the weather is bad, it could really affect the day. Like a bug? If it's going to be raining and we're all going to be outside in the cold, she's going to be wearing a wedding dress, it could really put a damper on the mood. Poor Brida. Stunning. Paddy is hooked, but will the budget stretch to a wedding in his own private swamp? Lisa, I'd love to get married here. We're going to have a bog team wedding here. OK. Breeders from the locality. So she would know the area She knows well. the area well. Perfect. Had you thought about lighting? Well, I was thinking about fairy lights. They'd be lovely. Along the side of the, the logs. Yeah, they'd be lovely. Just to put a bit of a special team to it. He's taking on a bit of a gamble, yeah. It's, it's his wedding team that he wants to go with, but if it turns out to be a shitty day, it could be a shitty wedding. Now, about the price? There would be no charge for use of Lockborough Parklands, but we'd ask you to give a donation to our charity. I will pull it off. There's no such thing as, I hope, I will pull it off. I have to pull it off. No rental fee. Maybe you can spend the money on umbrellas. Deal? Deal. Deal, Deal lads. Deal, lads. Date is set. <laughs> I've made a lord be with you in this one anyway, pal. God is always with me. <laughs> Bring on the bog wedding. Paddy can still save the day with a lavish, mind-blowing reception venue. This is hopefully the place that I'm going to nail for the wedding reception. This might get me the brownie points that I need for after putting Breed in the bog. <laughs> or maybe not. She may be a country house girl, but Paddy is more of a public house man. However, he does have a vision. I'm going to have an Australian themed afters. It's where me and my wife to be met. It means a lot to me to recreate the place. It's called Shenanigans. For the wedding guests, the Shenanigans will have to take place in the outdoor recreational centre, more commonly known as the car park. We all got yeah. everything. You have to use a lot of imagination on this one now. Visualising it, saying, Marquis coming in, it'd have 
for everybody to see top table. I think you're right, actually. You look really well. Yeah. Very spectacular. It sounds like a great dance floor here, anyway. It's a super dance floor, yeah. Well, as they say, up there for thinking, down there for dancing. I haven't a clue how to dance. Right. <laughs> I can drive, though. Oh, indeed, you're well able. Back at Gloucester House, Breda is hooked on silver service, high-end decor and a warm, dry, luxurious interior. Wow, isn't it romantic? Wow. Well, it's all white, but the spots of green from the fresh flowers and candles. There's not one thing that's wrong with this place. It's the fact that she's losing control. <laughs> she's losing it. She's going to have to do what someone else tells her. And Breda doesn't like that. And now this is not on her terms, and I think that's freaking her out. His standards are a lot lower than mine are, so it could be anything. If he had attention to detail like I prefer, then I'd be happy about that. But Paddy's so easy going, he just, he wouldn't care less. Just when it couldn't get any better, the bridal suite. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. Get used to this. This is the bridal suite. Maybe she shouldn't get too used to it. Um, we have an on suite here with it. Yep. It's right job. It even has a view. It's, uh, it's nice and quiet it's in on. here. Are you happy, lads, or what do you think? <laughs> oh, crikey. Oh, I have to try it out. Some of those cows may even make their way onto the menu. We're going with the Australian team. Okay. Um, what about a barbecue? Talk are you about steaks now? Well, talking? steaks. You're talking about steaks. Steak burgers. Okay. You're talking about yeah. um, sausages, chicken okay. wings, skewers. chicken skewers. Yeah, Even if you could try to find an old kangaroo, okay, you can throw, throw an old, an old bit of an old barbie. Yeah. I can't see anything. We'll do a deal. Great, brilliant. Could be anything. Could be a pub. I won't say a marquee, a tent. Like he's a country boy, so he likes being outdoors. Could be anything. I really don't know. Now for the wedding transport. It will take a special vehicle to handle the marshy bog. So Paddy's off to see Breda's favourite uncle for one of those customised bog limos. Paddy, how are we doing? Um, yeah. I'm looking to use <laughs> your turf cutter in my wedding. OK, that's a new one on me, but <laughs> anyway, tell us more. I'm thinking about bringing her, say, on the back of the machine. OK. Would you think? It could be a possibility. Of course of... it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a great idea. It's going back to where she came from. So it's bringing a lot of memories of Prida coming in, doing turf. Could you sit on this, Joe? I wouldn't recommend that, but put, put a seat there. Yeah. And even put seat belts if you want. Just, it has to be safe. Yeah. Do you want the bride face back? I or sideways? To, I'd say you nearly want... Or, or forward? Well, you nearly want the bride facing back. If you have her facing back, the muck off the wheels will only get in the back of her dress. I'd love to be a fly in the wall, or even on, in the tractor, to see Breda's face when this turns up. <laughs> she ain't going to like this one bit. But he's going to do it anyway. The first of the family to wed, Breda, her mother and her sisters are dress shopping. But all they can do is look. I'll try that. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> I don't want anything too plain. I don't like these dresses that just go straight down. I like something with a little bit of flow to it. You know, it's a very special day, so I want something a bit spectacular. I think you'll go for something fussy, and she doesn't like fuss. And then there will be a fuss. Oh, wow. She wants everybody to think that she looks stunning, like any bride would. That's going to be difficult when he's picking the dress. We don't have the same dress sense. If we're in a shop, he will say, oh, do you like that? Or that might look nice. And it's completely the opposite of what I'm looking for. Meanwhile, Paddy keeps on trucking. This time, he's on a mission that could make or break the bride's big day. Feeling nervous. It's important to get this right. You can picture Breda in the dress. The one that just doesn't show off too much cleavage, but just enough to get me aroused. Ah. How sweet. What fabric would you like? Would you like oh, a satin? I was thinking ivory. That's a colour? Well, that kind of a... Well, would you like a satin fabric? Oh dear. Margaret has her work cut out. Chiffon fabric? Would you like that? Chiffon, no. This one's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I like the bottom Look of that. The it's detail is there at the top. <laughs> it's really, really elegant, isn't it's it? It's very 20s or something. I hope you get the weather. So the weather pretty. doesn't matter, ma. Or maybe it does. Like, this is her wedding day. 
Oh, She's going to yeah. be looking at these photographs for the rest of her life. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Maybe she'll burn them. Can Paddy stop Breda's dreams and her photos from going up in flames? That looks like something out of a horror movie. <laughs> she looks like a swan in that joke. We're actually harder than a woman, please, aren't it? There's actually too much. Paddy even has his own method for measuring the cup yeah. size. Not enough strap. Not enough strap to hold them babies in. Steady now. This is a disaster. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Just I'll be going tired by the time I get in there. Rita's first choice is long and lacy. No, that's not the one, Rita. No. No. I like this one. Tis. Yeah. yeah. It looks really well up to here. And then it looks like a curtain from then on. I wouldn't be comfortable in something like this. Patty's not going to get a nice dress. <laughs> a lot of pressure on me if I have a dress that doesn't suit me. Because everybody wants to look well on their wedding day, don't they? And if it's not going to suit my figure or, or if it's not going to make me look pretty, then it's going to be really upsetting. After hours of dress shopping, Patty needs a good stiff drink. And just as the bride rejects the lace, it's exactly what Paddy goes for. There's a kind of a fairy tale part to it. My shoulders are perfect. First glance with this dress just popped out to me. Do you want a chance to want to see more? You better look at more. No, I, I think now I better see another one. You only need one. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to pick the right one. Oh, yes, fair enough. Meanwhile, Brida has moved on to an elegant off-the-shoulder yeah, number. That's, yes. that's gorgeous. Yeah. This gorgeous. is the one. That's the dress, beat. Yeah, this is definitely it. Gorgeous. Definitely see myself walking up the aisle in this one. Yeah. The cut of the sleeve is really yeah. unusual. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's nice. It's not yeah. one you see all the time. I like this. It's really pretty. I love the neckline. Yeah, this is definitely it. It's definitely the one. The dress. Mm. Stunning. Paddy seems to be on top of his game. He might have just found Breda's dream dress. I'm sure does they have to be there or can they stay up here? They won't, do you see there? Because if you try and pull them up. They'll, they'll catch. Yes. They have to stay on the on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit worried about that. What do you think, Ron? In comparison to the first one. Paddy's having doubts. But unaware that she's getting married in a bog, the bride has found what she's looking for. I expected to just come in and try on a few dresses, but you do get attached to to what you're wearing and knowing that you look good. Definitely wow. a bride. Wow. Oh, that is amazing. And I suppose it's a bit upsetting to know that I can't um, wear it on my wedding day. Disaster. Paddy ditches the off-the-shoulder style Brita loves in favour of the dreaded lace. Definitely needs a veil to... Put the finishing touches to it. Yeah, this is the dress. So close. He was so close. 100% sure. Very positive. He has made his choice. Now to try and get a bargain into the bargain. The price of this dress is 800 euros. Many changes are coming down a small bit. How much is a small bit? Tenner? Best I can do would be 750 on it. Seven. OK, we'll work on seven. Veil and alterations. The, the alterations and the veil, that'll come to 300. I'm not really happy because I'm going over my budget, but... She is worth it. You're not budging. Sorry. <laughs> I ain't budging. Deal. Nothing I can do about it, it has to be done. My mind is exploding at the minute I've seen Breeder walking up the aisle like this. Oh, man. Dress and venue sorted, Paddy now has an important message to write. It's a special challenge for him and something he's determined to get right. When, when I met Breda and I told her I couldn't read and write, she was kind of, this can't be, you, you can write, you can read. Even texting, when I was texting Breda on the phone, I knew the, there were sentences there that spelling wasn't right. And then she said, yeah, we need to get you and I turned around, I kind of fobbed it off at the start, but then it really got to me. Dear sweetheart. I'm getting the help of a retired teacher once a week of a Monday. It has been so hard. 
the last week or 10 days. I'm going to write Brida a letter telling her just how everything, how hard it was for the last three weeks being away from Emily and Brida. Instead of saying it out of the mouth, put it on paper and she can actually read it. I think that's going to be very special on the day. For over two weeks, Brida has been starved of information about her own wedding. So, to take her mind off things, her mom has taken her to the ploughing championships. The crack is 90. An Irish country music sensation, Mike Denver, is about to play a very special request. Is Brida Lamb from County Offaly in the house today? This is something very, very special. We're going to bring her up on stage here to give a bit of a leg up. Here we go. We're coming right in here to the centre. How about this for these folks? Brida Lamb down there from County Offaly. Paddy Cooney wants to know, will you marry him next Wednesday? the 28th of September, if we put a silence for this. Yeah, I will marry you. Have a big cheer, nice round of applause. Thanks for Frida and Paddy, hip hip. Yeah, really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been as mortified in my whole life. It's not over yet. Well done, very well done. Yeah, it was yeah. great fun. Then. And Paddy was love of country music. I mean, he loves yeah. it. He plays yeah. it all the time. Emily yeah, and loves so do I. So, yeah, yeah, we all love music. Now I know the date, yeah. 28th of September. So I'm going to get married next week. One more time. Congrats. With the date set, it's time for the hem party. And on a cold afternoon in Offaly, Paddy has come up with something that is bound to have Brida laughing out loud. I do laughter yoga. And laughter yoga basically is a very simple concept. It's just childlike playfulness and yoga breathing as well. Fun and laughter is definitely guaranteed. But for Brida, it's no laughing matter when she hears that Paddy will not be covering the cost of her hen. Having to pay for the, the yoga, it's good fun, but we shouldn't have to pay for it. He, Paddy should have put money aside to look after us. Mm. So I'll be having words with him when I see him. <laughs> but you just can't beat a trip to the funny farm. This is your head part. Yeah. So you're OK with that? But for the boys, Paddy has splashed out on a luxury peat spa treatment. Today you are going to have a steam and heat treat. This is my stag party. My best man chose this lovely spa with a bog, the bog team was in it. I was getting a little bit sceptical at the start, I was saying, yeah, coven and peat. That's great. <laughs> because you are having the steam and peat, remember it is bog, all mm. right? So we are going to use disposable shorts as opposed to using your own, okay? It's a lovely it breeze. will be quite messy. Now, <laughs> 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 you can turn around. That's you looking lovely. Instead of putting on tan for the wedding, at least I have a little broom on it. Well, that was the whole point. While Paddy bathes in luxury, the girls are in for another surprise when they reach the second part of the hen. Why I haven't left money behind the bear for the hen and transport is because the budget got very, very tight. And I had to make sure that I had to relax before the big day. Seems it's all about Paddy. Meanwhile, the ladies have to make the most of it in Dan and Molly's, the local pub. Here's a toast to Brida, who deserves a good hen party. And a great hen party. A great hen party, and we're all going to have a great night. Yeah, we were disappointed, yeah. 
We thought yeah. Paddy would at least have a round of drinks ready for us, didn't we? Yeah, we thought he'd have about 500 euro behind the bar. <laughs> Better be a great dress, that's all I'm saying. It better be a good dress. <laughs> but after a day of bog pampering, the lads have still managed to put a few euros aside for a couple of pints. And three weeks apart, it's beginning to take its toll. I think we miss Paddy the most when it's just the two of us. There's lots of distractions at the moment, but when we, when me and Emily have a little bit of time together, just the two of us. We think about Paddy, don't we? Miss Breda, so much, the way we talk, starting to talk back to myself now it's gone so bad. She definitely doesn't laugh as much when he's not around. Sure you don't. You miss your daddy. Don't you? You want to give him a ring? Do you have his number? Because I don't. Going to playing with Emily, on the ground, and hearing her laugh, giggle away. There are all the things that, that I want from being a family. It's, it's hard being away from them. Finally, things are starting to happen. In a nervous rush. I'm nervous for you. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be nervous for you tomorrow. Today, Breed is off to see the dress that Paddy has chosen for her to walk down the aisle in tomorrow. Hi, Brida. Hi, I'm Margaret. So I'm really nervous about what he's chosen. I'm excited, but I'm nervous, anxious about it. And what are you hoping for today? I'm hoping for something that fits right and looks looks good. Mum is bracing herself. I'm in survival mode. Pressure on me is to keep the family balanced, to pick up the pieces, and just to gauge the mood, and to try and, you know, sort things out before they happen and before they escalate. And even though she trusts them, the doubts creep in now and again. It's a risky business. If Paddy messes this up, the whole day could go downhill fast. <laughs> the bride is lost for words. I think it's a bit like when I first met Paddy. Not extremely happy, but I think I can grow to love it. Not a great start. I don't really like the pleats. It's not something I would have picked myself, but it is pretty. Maybe so. Mum can help. You will. You'll get to love it. Yeah. Beautiful. She doesn't look convinced. Out of ten, I'd probably give it about a six and a half. Now she has to put on a veil, as well as a brave face. First reaction well, there was there's a lot going on. It suit my figure as well. And I suppose it's pretty special that Paddy picked out my dress as well. It's just a bit <laughs> surreal. It's hard to believe this is my wedding dress. No, I have no clue. Mm. Poor Paddy had no clue either. Paddy may not know a good dress, but he knows a good marquee when he sees one. And that's what he's ordered for the wedding reception. Pretty grim, but we get it. We get our fairy lights and all that up, up at the back here. We can transform this place. We better get cracking though, because time is not on our side at the moment, so. Sure, right here, there's a bush for you. The theme has an Australian twist to celebrate how they met, but the lads have their work cut out if it's going to be at a dream venue by tomorrow afternoon. It's really starting to get real now, but I've only 12 hours. Well, technically, I've only eight hours. I need four hours sleep. Now, for that authentic Aussie feel. I think Breeder is going to take a step back and say, what the fuck are you after doing? I think we can count on that. What I'm planning is 99% of it is coming from the heart. There's 1% there, it's just like a foolish child getting involved. They may not be taking this seriously, but one thing Paddy is taking seriously is his speech. Determined to overcome his literacy problems, he's taking a final lesson from his teacher, Mary, to help him prepare for tomorrow. Organised and ready. Mm. First one was the last three weeks. One of the biggest goals that I have when it comes to the big day that I'll be able to have a letter, read it out, stand up tall, 
and say, I wrote this, and now I'm going to read it. And this is for Breda. I think you were thinking of mean, that mean, yeah. that mean more than family. Yeah. Just to show that I'm actually improving myself and actually feel better on myself for writing a letter to Breda. The big day has arrived, and soon Breda will find out what happens when you leave your fiancé in charge of your wedding. There is excitement and trepidation in the air. If the hair and makeup's done right, if everything goes to shit, <laughs> at least we look good. <laughs> I'm 90 minutes away from seeing Paddy after a long stint away from each other. It feels about two months, really. I'm really, really excited to see what Paddy has put up for all of us. I mean, if I have to walk through a field with cow shit and high heels, that's not going to be really something that I look forward to. That would be a bit of a disaster if that happened. Oh dear, because here comes her first clue, as groomsman David delivers the wedding dress and the kind of footwear no bride wants to see on her big day. Sorry about the delay. The good news is the dress is there. Thank God, finally. And I hope it fits. The bad news is that you have a pair of wellies. Oh, they look like wellies. Like exactly the footwear you need. Wow. I'm going to kill you and Paddy. It wouldn't be Paddy unless it was a pair of wellies. I believe I have to wear a pair of wellies. We should have known there'd be wellies involved. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah. we should have known. If it's Paddy, definitely. Instead of getting ready, Paddy and the lads are still bogged down getting Burra Bog ready for the ceremony. This morning we came down and made a few adjustments to the logs and things and got him looking a bit more like a church and that kind of gave it some bit of a traditional look. We already had some header picked and stuff and we had turf, so we just put it all together and I don't know what to do with a bog wedding. <laughs> just try and make it happen. I'm very happy with it. Final touches now. It's grand. Job done. Perfect. If Breda were marrying Shrek. Just an hour to go, and a very nervous bride makes her first public appearance in that dress. Wow! Oh, my God. Amazing. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. She may have her doubts, but the family are blown away. <laughs> They're not shocked. Oh, shock. shock. Good man, Paddy. Uh, he got lucky. I said to Breda, one out of ten. Yeah, I think it's probably up around an eight and a half now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But Paddy's a ten out of ten, so that's... Definitely ten out of ten. <laughs> she's so happy now. She's just content. She knows she's on the road to Paddy. And when she meets Paddy, that'll be... Well, it's the start of a new journey, I suppose. The bride is good to go, but Paddy's not in the mood to rush things. Come on and get ready. Listen, there's plenty of time. Come on, get ready. I'll we... tell you one thing, man. You want to shine up the shoes a small bit, though. <laughs> Just do it the easy way. <laughs> Finally, the waiting is over, and Breda's dad is ready to take her to her wedding. You're not getting new at all. Turn, turn oh, lengthways. I don't want me. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Daddy, hop in there. Daddy doesn't seem to know what a selfie is. Because we're travelling in style anyway. I love the licence plates. The bog is filling up with guests, hoping the bride and groom arrive before the rain. It's called tough shit. <laughs> and as the bride heads towards her mystery location... Apart from where we're going, all the major surprises are, are done and dusted, so... She will soon have to leave the comfort of her wedding limo for something a little more rustic. Oh, my God. Look, at is that your driving, is it? Oh, my God. That's hilarious. So I have to actually get up on that thing, do I? It's temporary, flagged off the fly. This is your transport. <laughs> this is the last year comfort here now. <laughs> Good girl. Oh Great my, to see you. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is that? This is my torque machine. Holy shit. <laughs> now she wants 
to this side or that side? That's it, over here. Okay. Mind, would your heels go down through there? Do I have no heels on, Jerry. I'm oh, well he's on. Now we're going to be in there. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. I'm more five, but it's a bit of fun. We've had some crazy ideas, but this is certainly up with them, isn't it? <laughs> Where the fuck are we going? If doesn't get here soon, she and Paddy could have a stormy start to their marriage. So here, where is he going? Around. Yeah, he's coming around to the back there. Come yeah. on this way. Put about it. The veins of veins, if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm just going to go with the floor. Time to get this show on the road. I'm happy out. Everything is perfect. Everybody that I want here is here. End of story. Yeah! So, in a bog in County Offaly, two people who were meant to be together are finally back together. Reader with this ring, I wed thee. Where a sign of my love. Patrick, with this ring, I wed thee. Where is a sign of my love? On behalf of the community, I now declare them husbands and wife. Patrick, you may kiss your bride. That's it, Patty. Get the leg over. gentlemen, family and friends, please be upstanding for Mr. and Mrs. Cooney. I never thought he could pull something like you could pull something like that off, Patty. The, the bog cruiser was a bit of a shock. I just didn't know what was going to happen after that. You were close a few times now, Patty. No, I'm not out of the woods yet. No, but maybe getting the bride out of the bog would be a step in the right direction. After getting married in wellies, a ride on a tractor, and a ceremony in a bog, Breed is about to come face to face with the venue for her wedding reception. Hello. Hi. Mahan Kalini. No need to worry, the reception's not in the pub, it's oh. in the car park. Keep them eyes closed. I'm leaving the tempt to open them. They open my eyes? Hold on till I have a drink. <laughs> oh, wow, look, shenanigans. Australia, they see Australian flags. Didgeridoos. Snakes. Oh, yeah, I had to put the snakes on. It's nice, <laughs> like. It's not a country house, but it's nice. And we'll have a good time. Right, Taka. I would attend. What would you give me? And you better go. You better score high, or else you get no lucky lucky tonight. We give it about a six. Paddy's not getting away easy, and on top of that, the crooks have got a hold of his didgeridoo. Opportunity to introduce the newest Mr. and Mrs. Cooney. Let the party begin. It may be everything Paddy wanted in a wedding, 
But what about the bride? Well, we're really, really happy around everybody that's important to us. We've made some really great memories. After the three weeks, though, it's been pretty good. I think today really yeah. made it all worth it. It was really, really something special. The best part was to see when I turned around and I see Breda come up there. That's... Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, that now ready. She's wearing the breeches. Cool Paddy saved the day with the speech he wrote specially for Breda. The last three weeks have been, what would I say, tough. Been away from Mrs. Cooney here beside me. We went to Australia. I flew home. I came back out two months later. Four, four and a half months after that, we were engaged. Coming on a year with Emily, I know, two and a half years, and we're married. We've gotten this far now, we're just going to enjoy the rest of the night and celebrate it till it's over, and I suppose that we pulled it off. The wedding was fantastic, and I'll never be at a wedding like it again. Yeah. Again, yeah. ever. Relief, pure relief. We survived. <laughs> 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 <laughs>